Welcome to part two of some examples integrating using these six basic trig integral formulas. Here we have the integral of sine two x divided by the quantity one plus cosine two x integrated with respects to x. In its current form, it doesn't seem to fit any of these basic trig integral formulas. So even though this one does contain trig functions, in its current form, it doesn't fit any of these basic formulas. Remember, we cannot divide this up into two different fractions. We can only do that if the sum is in the numerator. This is not equal to sine two x over one plus sine two x over cosine two x. That would be an algebraic error. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this in its current form and try to perform a u substitution. If we let u equal the denominator, one plus cosine two x, let's see what differential u would be. Differential u would be the derivative of one, that's gonna be zero, and the derivative of cosine two x using the chain rule would be negative sine two x times two dx. So differential u would be equal to negative two sine two x dx. And notice how our integral does contain sine two x dx so let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative two. So negative one half du is equal to sine two x dx. So let's go ahead and try to write this in terms of u. So sine two x dx is equal to negative one half du. And then since u is equal to one plus cosine two x, this is just one over u. So this simplifies nicely. And even though it did contain trig functions, we actually did not end up using any of the basic trig integral formulas. We ended up using the log formula. This ends up being negative one half times natural log absolute value of u, where u is one plus cosine two x. And let's go and take a look at one more example. Here we have a definite integral. Remember, tangent squared x plus one is equal to secant squared x. So if we subtract one on both sides here, we would have secant squared x minus one is equal to tangent squared x. So we can perform a trig substitution here. We end up having the square root of tangent squared x dx. And of course, this is a perfect square, so we're left with the integral of tangent x dx. And this does fit one of our basic integral formulas here. So we're gonna have negative natural log absolute value of cosine u. In this case, u is just x, so we'll have cosine x. And this is a definite integral, so we'll have to evaluate this at pi over four and zero. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll have negative natural log absolute value of cosine pi over four minus negative natural log absolute value of cosine zero. Well the cosine pi over four is equal to square root two over two. So I have negative natural log square root two over two. And this will be plus natural log of cosine zero, but cosine zero is one and natural log one is zero. So this would be our final answer. We could break this up into two natural logs. Now sometimes some textbooks like to perform some fancy algebra on answers like this. So let's go ahead and show the different ways this answer could be expressed. First we could break up this fraction by writing two, first we could break up this fraction by writing the difference of two logs. It'd be the opposite of natural log square root two minus natural log two. And then if we cleared the parentheses we'd have a positive natural log two minus natural log square root two. Remember the square root two is the same as two to the one half power. So this would be natural log two minus natural log two to the one half. And of course now we can apply the power property of logs. So we'd have natural log two minus one half natural log two, which would give us one half natural log two. 
So again, depending on the text, you could have an answer expressed in this form, maybe in this form, or even in this form. All of these are equivalent. I hope you found this helpful.